GRA LMS Cup Show of the Year as the series comes to a climax here in Abu Dhabi. It's been a more competitive season than ever, but only one driver will emerge victorious. The Yas Marina circuit in Abu Dhabi played host to the season finale of the 2014 Audi R8 LMS Cup. 21 turns and 5.5 kilometers in length, with the penultimate race of the year taking place under the lights for the first time in the Cup's three-year history. The top two drivers in the overall standing started round 11 in first and second, with Andre Couto on pole ahead of his rival Alex Jung. But there was drama at the start as Jung edged ahead of Couto too soon and he would later receive a 25-second penalty. The replay clearly shows that Alex on the left-hand side had jumped the start, so there could be no argument. Behind the front two, young Hong Kong driver Matt Solomon went from fifth to third into turn one. Frankie Cheng, who also had a shot at the title, moved up three places to fourth. Frankie had been poor in qualifying, but he was pushing Jung hard for second place and moved past him on lap six, with a Malaysian struggling with the extra 60 kilos he had in his car for winning the previous race in Shanghai. Meanwhile, 2012 champion Ma Chi Li passed last year's champion, Adli Fung, to move into sixth a few laps later. Adli Fung would go on to clock the third fastest lap of the race, putting him third on the grid for round 12. Li would later choose to end his race early in order to save his tyres and give himself the best possible chance to snag a win in the season finale. At the front, Andre Couto was consistently personified, staying away from trouble and building up a 12-second lead 12 laps into the 15-lap race. Let's see. Just before the end, Matt Solomon was forced to retire from fourth place with a technical problem, ending what would have been his best result of the season so far. Couto took the win ahead of Frankie Cheng, and although Alex Young crossed the line in third, his time penalty pushed him down to sixth, with Rahel Fry completing the podium. The result gave Kuto an 11-point cushion in the standing, knowing that a top three finish in the season finale would guarantee him the title. How confident are you about round 12 giving extra weight to your half tomorrow? Well, now it's a gamble, right? Uh, we don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if the tire is going to last. I don't know how the car will be. I just know that uh, I'm on it and um, bring it. Kuto was again on pole for round 12, having set the fastest lap time in round 11. And he had the perfect start, maintaining his position into T1, despite carrying an extra 60 kilos. Alex Young carried 20 additional kilos for being third across the line, despite a sixth-place classification in the last round, and maintained his second place here, followed by Frankie Cheng, who moved past both Adli Fong and Machi Lee into third. Machi had slipped down from 3rd to 5th at the start, but pulled back a place as soon as he went past Adli Fong. But moments later, Rahel Fry jumped past both boys to go into 4th. Alex Jung then completed the first step of his championship plan by going past Kuto into the race lead. But Kuto showed every intention of coming right back at Jung, and Kuto knew the title would still be his unless he slipped further down the field. At the turning point of the race and arguably of the championship, came in the final few laps, as Kuto again went past Jung, but went off track as he did so. He failed to give the place back to the Malaysian, as the rules dictate he must, and would later draw a 25-second penalty after a lengthy review which would prove extremely costly. The action continued with Adli Fong passing Rahel Fry for third. Next up, Frankie Cheng attempted to go past Rahel Fry at the hairpin corner, but lost control and made hard contact with Adli Fong. Both drivers were forced to retire. Back at the front, Alex Jung moved past Andre Couto for the second time in the race in what was turning into an incredible battle. But Jung didn't push the tempo, knowing that a bunch feel could benefit him if others were to overtake Couto. The battle for the lead was far from over. Alex Jung made a mistake going into turn 7, which allowed Andre to overtake him. However, it was short-lived as Alex made full use of the push-to-pass button to get back in front. Matt Solomon passed Rahel Fry for fourth on lap 11 during a very impressive performance by the Hong Kong rookie. With three laps to go, Kuto and Jung again came together at the exit of turn 7. But for once, the pair did not swap positions. 
Back in the pack, Taiwanese driver Jeffrey Lee had a tremendous battle with Saeed Al Mahari in what was one of the most competitive races of the season. Marchi Lee came close to moving into second on several occasions, but couldn't quite convert his opportunities and had to settle for third. Chinese driver Sun Jin turned in a much improved performance, passing KOU on lap 13, and then pushing Rahel Fry hard for fifth, but time ran out. The top seven cars crossed the line like a train in the space of just three seconds. Despite Jung's race win, Kuto celebrated, believing that his second place was enough to give him the title. But the stewards had no choice but to overturn the results, moving Kuto down to ninth and giving Jung the championship by 12 points. After I got that penalty, I thought, well, it's no longer in my hands. You know, I, I knew if I won on race two, the championship would be mine. My memories will stay with me forever, you know, and I had great memories uh, during the season. I had great wins and I had a great fight, so... I, I'm fighting for the trophy, I'm fighting for the cup. I really enjoyed this, this week. I did uh, two pole positions again, and, uh, you know, this is a track I've never been to. We fight for the honour of it and sweat blood and tears, I guess, for it. I feel great. I think I did a very good season. Finally winning the title, is, is, it's, I can finally take a breath again. That's very special for me and uh, I, I, take, I take good memories out of this, uh, this week and not the bad ones. The bad ones, I, I keep it aside, you know. I'll definitely be back, you know. It's a great championship, I love racing for Audi. Good, good people here and I'm, I'm looking forward to coming back next year. 2014 amateur champion Steven Lin notched up another victory, winning from Jinting and Ashraf Deval. They handed him a 25-second penalty, which dropped Kuto to 9th, which means that Alex Jung becomes our 2014 Audi R8 LMS champion. Machi Lee gets promoted to 2nd, and Matt Solomon finishes the season on a high with 3rd place. Steven Lin clinches another amateur category win with an 11th place finish. After two unsuccessful attempts, Alex Jung finally wins the Audi R8 LMS Cup Championship with 189 points, Andre Kuto is second with 177 and Rahel Fry is third. Jeffrey Lee had a solid season with 29 points to his name and Stephen Lin, our Amateur Cup winner, has six points and we look forward to seeing him in the main category next year. Hi Renee, so many highlights to choose from for the year, but let's talk about next year. Could you please tell our fans what's in store for the Cup in the 2015? We will add a lot of more excitement. We will have a super pole, that means actually after everybody qualified, the top eight are going out and battling for the top eight position. Secondly, we have a standing start with a launch control. This enables us actually to have a rolling start and a standing start at the same on the weekend. And what we also add is a new location. Taiwan will be within the cup as a new location. So stay tuned, a lot of things coming more. Thank you so much, Rene. It sounds like it's going to be an amazing race next year. And we'll see you all in the 2015 Audi R8 LMS Cup. Goodbye!